welcome to the BALT Symposium on Silk Vista. My name is Jose Cohen, and I'm going to be talking on my preliminary uh, impressions on this new Silk Vista flow diverter. If I would like to define uh, this flow diverter, I could say that this is a flow diverter that can be delivered through a 21 microcatheter. It presents low friction delivery, very good radio opacity, predictable opening, and is operator friendly. This, those are my disclosures. For example, in this case, you see a proximal dissecting aneurysm of the, of the posterior cerebral artery in a child. Uh, this is the angiogram. This is the uh, 3D image. This aneurysm is uh, also supplied or filled by the PICOM, the 3D image on magnified view. We cross this P1 to P2 segment, and then we form this uh, a construct, a baby Leo that is signed, marked here with the uh, blue arrows, and into the baby Leo to a uh, Silk Vista babies in telescoped fashion. On red, the ends of the more distal one. On orange, on orange the uh, ends of the second one. This is the immediate result. You can see here some white stuff that is, in fact, the entrance of blood through the carotid. This is the construct. This is the stagnation of a contrast into the aneurysm after a six minutes, obtained after six minutes of angiographic image. Then we go through the carotid. You see the PCOM PCA influx into the already excluded aneurysm lumen, provoke, provoking an endoleak mechanism that we treat by doing this connection of this PCOM PCA. This is the immediate post, the patient. This is the MRI obtained before the intervention and after 15 months of the intervention. This treatment only can be done with these new uh, uh, micro flow diverters from Bal. In the last month and a half, we treated 10 patients with uh, this uh, Silk Vista uh, uh, flow diverter all of them are ruptured aneurysm, aneurysms, uh, seven paraclinot, one supraclinot, one petros, and one anterior cerebral artery. Most of them are in the range of between small and, and, re and giant aneurysms. Uh, all were treated with double antiplatelet therapy, most of them with clopidogrel, four with prasu, and one with ticagrelor. Our general strategy is very simple. Uh, general anesthesia, normal tension, ACT between 250 and 300 seconds, double antiplatelet with a PRU below 120. We really uh, 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 stress this. We don't accept higher PRUs. Femoral approach and triaxial systems. My preferred combination for the, treat, for the use of this uh, flow diverter is arrow sheet 6 French, Navian 5 French, and headway 21. In, a specific, in special cases where the carotid is very tortuous, I go for Sophia EX. Second case, a small uh, carotid ophthalmic aneurysm. The proximal carotid measures point, uh, 4 millimeters in, in, in diameter, PRU 103. This is the immediate image obtained after the implant of this device. You can see again the radio positive is remarkable, especially I'm, I'm a chronic user of uh, pipeline, I couldn't get those images as nice as in this, uh, uh, with this uh, flow diverter. Pipeline, we can, I mean, you, you, you barely can see it. So uh, look at the time that it takes to implant the device and to perform the intervention. Case five, a proximal posterior wall, anterior cerebral artery dissecting aneurysm. In this particular case, what I did, uh, instead of crossing or covering the anterior cerebral artery, I did something a little bit different that is crossing uh, from MCA to carotid, understanding that I have a competitive flow from the other side with a good ACOM. This is the image of the MCA to carotid uh, flow diverter stent. Nice radiopacity. 
K6, it's a nice case of a close to giant carotid-ophthalmic aneurysm causing visual alterations in a, in a young nurse. Um, as you can see here, this is the, those are the images. This is the wide neck of the aneurysm. Uh, Prasugrel was given, 88 uh, was the PRU. In this particular case, uh, we tried to check the circle of Willis if there was any chance for the constructive techniques. In fact, the circle of Willis was incomplete. So we went for reconstructive techniques. In this particular case, the most problematic uh, step was to cross from to cross across the aneurysm neck. There was a, 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 a white neck in this case. I treated it to cross a changing, changing the shape of the micro guide wire using different uh, tricks. But in fact, it was uh, impossible to cross through this neck. I tried um, a wire loop around maneuvers like in this case, but I failed. And then what I decided to do was to build the cast of coils uh, with a a, 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 a denser cast at the entrance of the microcutter here, acting or in order to be like a deflecting shield for the navigation of the microcatheter. This is the idea. You, you prepare, you make a cast of coils at the, at the very entrance of the aneurysm and then the microcatheter deflects through this shield of coils. It's a cast of coils assisted navigation technique. In fact, deflects the navigation of the microcatheter. And also, secondarily, it also uh, dissipates the pressure on the, uh, on the aneurysm neck in the way that we describe as snowshoe effect. Uh, this is the navigation, uh, and this is the implant of the, of the flow diverter. Look what happened here. We, uh, I started to deploy the flow diverter, and then I saw this pinching of, this, uh, of, of the flow diverter. Then I played with the regular maneuvers, and again, I remained with this stenosis here. Uh, I didn't know how to deal with it. I played a little bit with the uh, system. I realized that I, I didn't have any other option rather than to um, uh, deliver completely the device, and through the the same, using the same guide wire of the device, I recrossed with a 21, and this is one of the good things of this system. You can recross with a relatively small catheter. The, the stent or the flow diverter stent is, is relatively flexible, so you can cross even through this very tight uh, structure or, or stenosis of the stent. I recrossed, exchange system, in, uh, and with a double ballon, I expanded the stent, as you can see here, very satisfied. That is in a very good shape. The, the image is, is nice. My result was OK. Uh, the patient did well. This is the post image with a very limited entrance of contrast into the aneurysm. This, those are the, the immediate post. And this is the MRI done one month after, where you don't see any remnant of this aneurysm. We will basically check this uh, aneurysm in, in one or two months to see how it's going on. But, but again, it was a challenging case. A 27 would never have done this, uh, this navigation. A 21 helped us understand. I was quite uh, happy with the, uh, with the performance, despite the fact that I need to do post-angioplasty. So 10 aneurysms, 11 implanted stents. One aneurysm required two stents for because of incorrect uh, stent sizing. I will show the case. This is going to be the last case that I show you. Recapture and reposition uh, was done in two cases. I, I didn't see friction. Uh, it's, it's a very nice, uh, you can navigate the, 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 the system quite nicely through a 21, through your 21 that we are so accustomed to use 21s for stroke that it really implies that you are using what you usually use. Uh, incomplete opening occurred only in two out of 11 uh, of the implanted uh, stents and required balloon angioplasty. Uh, and one of the nice things is it's that the mean time stent loading to full deployment is really short. It's close or even less to what uh, uh, we, we, we are used to for, for pipeline in my practice. Uh, complications, none. Uh, 
This is the case that I was talking about. This is a carotid ophthalmic cannulism that at the beginning I thought I was going to use a short flow diverter, a 15 mil a millimeters one. And then I reached this point when you say, okay, we are really close. Probably this is the, the proximal end is going to end at the level of the anterior curve and that's it and, and I'm going to be done. And I played a little bit, tried to, con to, to, uh, to contract the, the construct playing like in accordion uh, uh, maneuvers. And then I, uh, and, this, and then this is what happened. The stand remained in front of the curve that this is a nightmare. This is something that you don't like uh, and you don't want to, to occur, uh, uh, especially with a pipeline where it's so difficult to recross with a 27 and in front of the curve. It was really easy in this particular case to recross and I recrossed and then I uh, placed like a, a, a second flow diverter from a, a distal to proximal doing an, a, a, a type of sandwich uh, telescoping technique. This is the way it looks. This is the immediate post. You see the stagnation and a very nice a telescoping construct that corrected both proximal and distal, the extremes, the ends of the of the original flow diverter. So uh, this is the system that we use, six French as usual, Sophia in this particular case and Headway 21. In comparison to other flow diverters such as the pipeline or, or uh, cobalt, uh, cobalt chromium, uh, I believe that this uh, silk, silk Vista is technically simpler to deliver, to deploy, to maneuver, and to cross. Uh, much lower friction during delivery, more flexibility. It's unclear if you really need the uh, intermediate catheters. Radiopacity, no doubt, is much better. It opens widely on straight segments, and you need to maneuver a little bit in closed curves, like with every single flow diverter. It's simple to recross. This is surprising. Sometimes you see a very, very, very tight uh, 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 shape of the stent, but it's not difficult to recross. Uh, no special coating, so consider low PRU policy as we, uh, as I usually do. And uh, it looks to me that it behaves very much like the, like the baby. So if you have already practiced with the baby, uh, the mama is going to be yeah, very, very similar, very similar. So are there benefits of using a 21 microcatheter? I believe that yes, there is a, there is a benefit. Uh, the navigation is uh, much less demanding, less friction in the catheter, uh, extra space for uh, improved uh, angiographies, uh, more effective flashing. A 21 catheter can recross, a 27 sometimes uh, it doesn't uh, as simple. Thank you. And now uh, I present my friend, René Chapeau. Hello, it's a real pleasure to be here with you and to share our experience with the use of the new generation Silk, which is called the Silk Vista. So um, here is the flow diverter. What has changed? On, uh, I think um, Rosé just told you about the features. Uh, obviously, you see that the color has changed. Now there's this bluish color, which is related to electro polishing. Uh, the stent has been first coming out as a silk vista in small size, the, called the baby, with 84 wires made of DFT wires, drawn filled tube, which means that each of those wires is visible. Um, which makes the whole device entirely visible without the need of additional markers. And uh, Vista Baby goes through a 17 microcaster, so a caster with a 017 inch lumen, which is definitely um, the smallest um, um, to flow diverter compatible with the um, smallest microcatheters. So sizes ranges between two and three and a half millimeters. And another advantage is that it can be resheeted up to 90%. Uh, the change that occurred uh, now, since one year, we have the, um, the adult version, which is also available. So the Silk Vista, same number of wire, 
Same thing concerning visibility, again, GFT wires. This time it's compatible with the O21 microcatheter, whatever catheter you wish to use in sizes reaching from 3.5 to 5 millimeters with again the advantage not to have any flared ends, uh, which is specifically of uh, help if you're doing telescopic flow diversion. So here we go through some examples. Here it was with the baby, this fusiform aneurysm, one of the first retreated. Here's a device which is, of course, a bit short, but you can telescope. And the main advantage of having smaller microcasters is that re-entering through the flow diverters is much easier because you have less chance of having the microcaster being um, being uh, caught at the entry of the stent. And here you see we're progressively entering. Here we put three in telescopic way. Um, you can somehow appreciate by the color here how much of stent has been placed. And here the, um, that was the immediate results. We also should have should have placed a follow up, which is which is a cure after a couple of months. Now a situation more dedicated also for the um, small silk vista, which is this distal pica aneurysm with a pica which is still below two millimeters and an artery which is not as easy as it looks like on the AP view. If you look at this view here, you see that there is some angulation, but this angulation was not too much of a problem to be uh, passed with the microcatheter. And now we have the device, which is inside the Headway 17 microcatheter that we use here. And you see that it's super flexible because the conformation of the microcatheter does not change. And then the flow diverter is being placed. You can over open it inside the aneurysm, which allows the density of the mesh to be increased and which appears to be an advantage. So here, single device, you see immediately that here, the aneurysm was not filled anymore just after placement of the device. I was surprised to see that the effect was, was definitely very rapid. Here, similar situation, some of those uh, dissecting aneurysm in the course of the posterior cerebral artery where you can go there with most of the devices. It's not difficult, but definitely if you have to choose between the 027, 021 and 017, so 017 is gonna be the easier one. And you see here that the device is about to be placed, allowing, uh, play, allowing a very precise positioning because you can replace it up you uh, as often as you wish. Uh, this year, a recanalized ACOM that has been treated and retreated by repeated coiling and a growing aneurysm in a young patient. You, today, uh, it does make sense just to make, to place coils alone. So this aneurysm definitely reached the size where flow diversion is required. And you see here during delivery, of the silk uh, vista baby, it's possible to obtain an opening despite the fact that here the curve is quite tight. And this is immediately after filling with some coils, placement of the flow diverter. Um, that's the immediate result. And now we have here the follow up at six months, some minimal intimal hyperplasia. Because of the very well wall position of those devices, you can also change your way of treatment for those kinds of aneurysms here at the ACOM, where whatever you do, usually there is a recanalization, especially specifically if you go on for X stenting. Uh, it's handsome to do so, it's easy to get access to the contralateral A2. But in most of those aneurysmas, I saw there was a recanalization. So here we chose to remain ipsilateral because it's a disease of the ACOM, which is now 
absolutely abnormal. So if you want to isolate all this, stay ipsilateral going from um, A1 to A2. So that's a bit challenging part. You need to do a loop with the marker catheter through the aneurysm. And then uh, we went ipsilateral A1, A2 in both sides, leaving the marker catheter inside. And you see that after bilateral placement of both flow diverters, some coils were added. And this is here the, um, during treatment on the right side. No, the tre after treatment, the left side, there is no flow left going from left to right. This is the way it looked like at the end of the procedure. And after one year, you see that there is a complete disconnection between left and right side. And uh, here now some examples with a Silk Vista adult with the one getting through the 21 micro catheter where we intended here to bring a catheter, gel a catheter, place then um, the silk. And again, because of the nice conformability, because of the ability to shoulder the device and to increase the mesh density, I was quite surprised to see that after placement of the first flow diverter, there was absolutely no flow that was left. So is there still a need uh, to continue to place some coils here? Uh, probably no, it does not make sense. So just took the micro catheter out and you see at six months here that this aneurysm is, is cured, which is also to be confirmed on MR where it completely disappeared. Um, other situation, the fusiform aneurysm of the basilar, whenever they are not thrombosed, uh, we still make a layer with braided stents before we place the flow diverters. But here in this situation, we made a telescopic and I intentionally showed this picture. We made here proximal telescopic coming from here to there and the second one from here to there. And for the third one, we obviously placed it a bit distal. So this may be a situation if you lose access where it's a nightmare. But if it's easy with a microcaster to cross through the flow diverter, which is definitely the case when using smaller devices, recrossing in order to place another device that allows to recreate the junction becomes easy. So even if you have some imperfections at the junction, the point is not to avoid those to come because they will always occur, but how to solve this difficulty. And you can solve this difficulty by, um, by having a small micro catheter. Here's a 21. Uh, this is a headway 21 that was used to deliver the stents. And here is after delivery. This is the immediate result. And now, some times later, you have before and after. And you see here that already after a couple of months, um, the angiographic appearance is definitely much better. Uh, last case I want to share with you, this patient here, where uh, that's a fusiform enlargement in a young patient, which takes over the whole end of the internal carotid before the carotid T. And here, the additional difficulty is that there is no, uh, there is um, no P1 segment. So from this dysplastic segment, you've got a PCOM and the PCA and the MCA and the ACA. So how to spare simultaneously the PCA and the MCA? Of course, um, you may do a kissing flow diverters from the MCA to ICA in parallel from the PCA to the ICA. Uh, if you just place a regular flow diverter from MCA to ICA, the chances of progressively losing or acutely losing the PCA is not so low. So here's another way to look at this uh, fusiform enlarging, progressively enlarging artery with the need to 
protect, I mean, um, place flow diversion in the MCA, but also in the PCA. And finally, uh, also making this angulation appear to be a problem. Here is a posterior circulation, no P1 segment, still a good ACOM. And because of the specific uh, confirmation, uh, which shows to pr protect the PCA, but not by going from ICA. So in fact, here we chose to place flow diverters from the MCA to the ICA, but before protect the PCA by connecting it to the A1 segment. So we went from the control lateral side through the ACOM to the PCA, doing telescopic flow diverters from the PCA to the ACA, and then doing telescopic flow diverters from the MCA to the ICA which finally allows here at some point, it's immediately after placement to see that you have some filling of the PCA through the contralateral ICA. And if you look at the ICA, it's the way to preserve the MCA. This is quite shortly after treatment. So you still have the antegrad flow to the ACA, but no doubt that this will not remain. So because of the ease of use, because of um, the fact that you have no flared ends, so that telescoping flow diversion becomes very, very simple. Uh, definitely, um, it's possible to do this kind of treatment. So as a conclusion, Silk Vista um, is, in my opinion, the beginning of the second generation of flow diverters. Before, uh, all flow diverters went through O27, I don't want to go to distal vessels with the O27. So the O17 is already uh, a huge step forward. But for the larger sizes, for all flow divers up to five, handling O21 is, is much easier and safer. But of course, um, the fact to have something which is visible, visible entirely with DFT is of important help. Thank you.